So we're looking at transformations of functions and using transformations to help us graph functions. And so recall function, in order to be a function for every input, for every x value in the domain, you're only getting back one output in the range. We looked at a lot of different types of graphs. Let's look at the following. So let's say we had the graph y equals the square root of x. Well, first of all, you should be able to find the domain of this. And the domain of this, when we're looking for the domain and we have the equation, I look for my trouble spots. What are things that are not going to give me back a real number? And the values that won't give me back a real number are the values that I have to exclude from the domain. And so things that you have to worry about are, do you have radicals in that equation? And we do. And since we do, we have to look at, is this a even powered or an odd power radical? Well, there's no number here, so it's even. So that means that I cannot have negative numbers underneath this radical, because there's nothing I can square that's real and get back a negative number. So we have to make it that x is greater than or equal to zero. Or another way to write this, if they wanted interval notation, we're going to do a bracket, zero comma infinity. Range, well, if I don't graph it, I can think about it. Sometimes I need to start graphing just to see. But range, is there any time that I can plug in an x value and get back a negative number? And there's not. And so my range here I know is from zero to infinity. Let's graph it. So when I'm starting to plot points, I'm only using points from zero and bigger. So plugging in zero at x equals zero, I have the square root of zero, which is zero. So put a point here at one. I get back square root of one, which is one. Okay, well, I want to choose numbers that I know what the square root is. So I would choose four next and four would give me back two. So it's again like a kind of like a sideways half of a parabola. Well, what would happen If we took or looked at the graph, what we have. The graph y equals the square root of x. And then we do a plus two outside. So if we just took this and we added two to it, well, it's not gonna affect the X value I plug in here. When I plug in zero, I would have square root of zero, but it would affect the Y value when it's outside like this. So if I do the plus two in here, this would give me the point zero two, which is up here. If I plug in one for X, I'm just going to add two to my Y value, my output, I'd have one, three. If I plug in four, I got back two plus that two. So I have a point at four, four.
So notice I have the exact same graph, it's just shifted up two units. And so if you have an addition or subtraction outside of our original function, then this is going to shift our graph vertically. So this shifts the graph. Y equals square root of X up to units. Okay, so that comes to vertical translation. And so vertical, I started with that because that's always the easiest one. So vertical shifts. f of x. So if we have f of x plus k, this shifts the graph up k units. Where k is a constant. Technically, I probably should say k is greater than zero here. And if I do f of x minus k, this shifts the graph down. K units. Okay, so we should be able to take any parent function, and that's kind of what I call it, but the, the graphs and shapes that you should be familiar with and look at it with just adding some constant to it. It's just going to shift the graph up that many units. So technically, we know points on the graph. If x, y if this were points on f of x, they get points on f of x plus k, how about you say plus or minus k, outside, the point that was here is now going to be shifted. x is going to stay the same, but your y value, you're either going to add or subtract that constant k. So that's for vertical shifts. We already talked about graphs. What would happen if we change the value of x? So remember, we looked at even functions. If we could plug in negative x wherever we saw an x and we got back the original function f of x, we saw a couple of things. We said that this was an even function. That's just the definition. But we also talked about before, if you plugged in uh, x value, so just choose x somewhere, and now you switch it, get the same y value, but your x has changed signs. So this was a reflection across the y-axis. Okay. Our functions might not be even, but what I'm trying to get at is if you see, and they ask you to plug in a negative x wherever you see an x, what's going to happen is the graph that you originally have is now going to be reflected across that, that y-axis. So. Um, reflections. So if we're looking at the um, at the graph f of x, so there's two ways to get these reflections. One we just talked about. So f of negative x. This is a reflection across the y-axis. This reflects the 
the graph of f of x. Across the y axis. So if x, y, if this is a point on f of x, the point that's going to be on this f of negative x, our x value changes signs. So if it was negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative, but our y value stays the same. So if we get back, went back up to that other problem that we just looked at, right, the square root of x, and we looked at what is f of negative x there and looked at the graph. Let me just pull that down. It probably would have been faster if I just wrote it out. Well, we saw that we had a point at zero, zero, changing my x value does not change negative zero is still zero. So I still have a point at zero, zero. We had had a point at one, one. Changing my sign on my x, I get negative one, one. Come on, don't want you. I have a point there. And then at two, four, I now have a point at negative 2, 4. Okay, sorry, I shouldn't have, I didn't need to do that. I'm going this way. Um, sorry, I had a point that I, I, I was off. I had a point at 4, 2. I have negative four two. First, we need the right point. Okay, so negative four two. Oops. So this is just the same graph of y equals square root of x, but a reflection across this axis. So looking at what would happen if we wanted to reflect this across the x-axis. And to get it reflected across the x-axis, basically we're changing the sign of our y value, right? So if I wanted the graph of y equals um, square root of x, and I wanted this reflected across this x-axis, this point here at 1, 1 would now become 1, negative 1. This point here that was at 4, 2 is now going to become 4, negative 2. And so it would look like this. And so this one is y, or um, how would I write this? Well, yeah, I can just say this is y equals. I'm changing the sign on my y value. And so the negative has to be outside. So two. If you have negative of f of x, 
this reflects the graph of f of x. across the x-axis. And so points wise, if x, y was a point on f of x, then our new point on negative f of x, well, our x value is the same, it's the y value that's changing signs. Okay, so depending on negative, if you plug in a negative and plug it in side of the function, then it's a reflection across the y axis. If it's outside, it's the reflection across the x. And sometimes I just technically have to think about it. Changing my sign of X, oh yeah, that's the Y axis. Changing my sign of Y, oh yeah, that's the X axis. Um, I'm just kind of visual where I have to just think about it real quickly. Um, so those are our reflections. Let's say we added something though inside of our function. And this is gonna be our horizontal shifts. So if I want to add some number inside my function, I'm just going to tell you right now and then we can discuss why in a second. And k is positive. This is going to shift f of x to the left. K units. And then if I have some value X and I subtract some number from it inside the function, this shifts F of X to the right. K units. Okay. The reason why this is, is because basically when we have this X plus K, this is telling me this is the value, our input that we're plugging into our function. And so when we're plugging in X plus K, we're seeing what value would give us the same Y value as before. Well, if I'm looking at what X value is gonna give me the same Y value, I would have to solve for X. So when is X plus K equal to Y? I would actually have to subtract K on both sides. So my original X value, if I'm looking at this, is gonna be Y minus K. So if x, y is a point on, on f of x, in order to get our new point, we need to make up for what we did, either subtract or add. So x is going to be x minus k. So point on f of x plus or minus k, plus or minus k, and y is going to stay the same. So let's just, again, take our function we've been working with, that square root of x. 
And now let's look at the graph where, let's see, how about the square root of x minus two? Well, notice our domain has changed. Remember, we can't have any negatives underneath this radical. X minus two has to be greater than or equal to zero. X has to be greater than or equal to two. And so that minus in here, the one that used to be at zero, zero, is now gonna become zero, not zero, it's gonna now be gonna become two. Zero. Okay, so let me just go back in and just plot this real quick, our original function. So one, one, four, two. So now we have one at two, zero. When we had one, one before, well, we have to add two to this one, which is gonna become three, one. And then our point at four, two, now it becomes add two to four, we get six, two. Okay, so same graph, but just shifted over two units to the left or to the right. And this was X minus two. On, on that same graph, could, could you plot how a uh, negative square root of x became a negative function? Um, so, yeah. So graphing y equals the negative square root of x. Well, once I plug in the negative in here, our, my, again, my domain is gonna change because my domain negative, what's underneath the radical has to either be bigger than or equal to zero. And so if I multiply both sides by a negative one, remember multiplying by negatives actually flip the sign of our inequality. And so, but when you're plugging in values here, if I plug in zero, I get zero. If I plug in negative one, well, negative of negative one is square root of one, which is one. But I was just taking this graph and it was just changing my x values. So my point here that was at 1, 1, it's just reflecting it across this y-axis. And this point here that was at 4, 2, that's going to reflect it across this y-axis. So now my y value is going to be negative 4 and positive 2. But we, we couldn't have a square root of a negative number, so you took the, the negative outside of the square root and then gave it a negative function. No, I didn't, I didn't take out outside of the square root. Because the negative is in front of the x, in order for um, the value of x to be in the domain for this function, it actually had to be a negative number so that we could create a positive underneath that, that radical. And so my domain has changed when I put this negative, it's the negative is actually inside the radical. It would be different if I looked at, are you oh, talking, sorry, Timothy, you're talking about this one, um, y equals negative with an outside the x, because this was a different one that we graphed to. 
Uh, yeah, that's the one I was talking about. I, I couldn't, Sorry. I couldn't Sorry. quite tell. It, it made the function negative. Yeah, so that actually, this is basically, this is changing my y values. What I originally had was y equals positive square root of x. And so think of it to get this negative in here, I'd have to multiply both sides by a negative one. So this to recreate it. And so I'm just changing my y values of my graph with this out here. So this changes the sign of the y value of the point. So same kind of idea, let's look at the original function, this just the square root of x, which was this one. And it's changing, it's keeping the x value the same, but it's changing the y value of my point. And so at this point at x equals one, my y value now is becoming negative one. So it's down in here. When my x value was four, which is here, when x was four, um, plugging in the four in here doesn't affect anything. It's just, well, it's gonna affect my y. It's now gonna be negative square root of four, which is four negative two. So it's down in here. And so that one, we flex it across the, the negative outside as a reflection across the x-axis. Sorry, I, I wasn't, I misinterpreted which one you meant with the negative. So it really depends on where the negative is and what it's gonna do to our graph of our original function. So this is basically saying if f of x is equal to square root of x, another way to write this y equals square root of x, if I plug in negative x in here, it's changing the sign of my x value. Tells me to go back up in here and change this sign. Or if I had negative f of x, this is changing the sign of my y value, but keeping x the same. So it just really depends on where that negative sign is. Is it in front of our y value or is it in front of our x value? And depending on that, depends on is that graph gonna, original graph gonna reflect across the y-axis or the x-axis. And that's where I have to stop and think again, like, okay, I'm changing my x value when I plug in a negative right in front of my x, which is a reflection across y. Y values. F of X is another way to say Y as a re reflection across the X axis. Okay, so um, there's one other type that can change the graph and that's if you multiply either your X value by a constant or your Y value by some constant. And it depends on is that X value um, bigger than one or is that x value between zero and one? I know if I'm changing the sign of, of the x value, then it's gonna, then it's going to either affect the x or the y. So this is stretching and compressing. So I don't like these words, honestly. They confuse me sometimes. They're stretching, looks like they're shrinking it. And sometimes they're compressing, looks like they're making it um, wider. But just so that you're familiar that they call stretching and compressing. So there's two different possibilities. Let's say A is equal to a constant. Either A is going to be bigger than one. Let's look at that case. So if we look at A times 
outside is the easier one, times f of x, and an a is bigger than one, what's going to happen is your y values are going to grow a lot faster because you're multiplying your y value by some number bigger than one. And so this, um, makes y grow at a faster rate. And so if you have xy is a point on f of x, well, this is in front of the y value, so x is staying the same but our y value now is gonna be a times y. So this is our point on a times f of x. Same thing though, even if a was between zero and one, this time though, if a is between zero and one, this is going to make the y value grow at a slower rate. The y values grow slower or decline, I guess, slower. So again, points are still going to be the same if A is outside. It just depends. So for example, if we looked at y equals two times the square root of x. Well, our points on y equals the square root of x, we had zero, zero. Multiplying my y value there by two does not change anything, so I still have a point at zero, zero. We had a point on the graph at one, one. My new point, x is the same, but my y value when I plug in one here, it has to be multiplied by that two. So one times two is two. We had a point at four, two. My x value when I plug in here is still four, but my y value is now multiplied by two out here. So that's gonna be four, four. So depending on is that number bigger than one or between zero, one depends on how fast it will be growing. So original, and then plugging into we had zero, zero, one, two, four, four. Okay, so this is growing much faster. Than the original. But if we halved our y values, so if we looked at y equals one half times the square root of x, that's going to make our y values grow slower. So when I had a point at one one, it now becomes one one half. It's half of that y value. My point at 4, 2, half of 2 would become 1. So y values are shrinking because of that number out front. Okay, so I just want to give you that last one and then I'm going to let you take it, we'll take a break. Um, so the last one is if we have that constant inside, we're affecting our x value. So if our function, I'm going to blow this up just because I, I want thicker pins. Oh, nice. <laughs> so if we look at um, y is equal to the square root, actually, 
before I do that. Let's look at y equals f of a times x. So a couple things can be. A could be greater than one. If A is greater than one, then this actually, if it's inside, it does the opposite of what we think. To undo it, we'd have to divide by A. So if X, Y is on F of X, our new point, I guess it's the same thing if it, it's bigger or less than zero. I'm sorry, not less, between zero and one. This would be X divided by A. Why? Okay, so this is not going to, our x values are going to be smaller for dividing by that number, and our y value is going to stay the same. And then if a is between 0 and 1, well, think of it if you're dividing by a, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, it's going to flip it up and it's going to go on the top. X values grow slower. Than before. So if it's between zero and one, its values are going to grow faster. Let's look at f of one half times x when f of x was the square root of x. Well, points on f of x, zero, zero. This rule says that I have to divide by one half, but dividing by one half is multiplying by two. So if I have x over one half, this is the same thing as two x. So two times zero is zero. Y stays the same. When I plug in one, 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 two times one, so I now have a point at two, one. Or two is now becoming is now becoming eight two. Zero, zero, one, four, two. Here's our original. And then our new one is zero, zero. Um, we said two, one. And we said eight, two. Where if we looked at it as f of one, f of two of x, the rule said divide by two, so zero, zero is now zero, zero. One, one is now one half, one. 4, 2 is now 2, 2. Starting the same place, 1, 1, and then 2, 2. So 
it looks like this. Okay, so we'll get and look at a lot of different examples when we get back from break. But those are kind of the rules. So it depends on are you adding inside your function? Are you adding outside the function? Um, is the multiplication inside, outside? Is there any negative in there? And it depends on are you affecting your x or your y value at that point? So we were just looking at it with one transformation going on with these, but multiple transformations can, can be going on at once. And so when we get back to, we have to talk about order because order matters the way that we do these. Um, if we didn't do the right order, then we could get a different graph that wouldn't match. So let's take a 12 minute break and get meet back here um, at 920. Let me just stop. So order does matter, just like when we're doing order of operations with expressions and simplifying things down or with solving equations, um, order is gonna matter when we're graphing. And so they might tell you to do things in a certain order um, in order to come up with a function. Well, do it in the order they tell you, but if they're telling you to graph a function and they give you an equation with transformations in there, then you need to make sure that you're doing the following order. So order. And graphing. Functions using transformations. So first thing that you want to do is do any of your horizontal shifts. The next thing that you want to do is any reflections. Third thing is shrinking or compressing, stretching and compression, so compressions. And stretches. And then the last thing you're going to do are your vertical shifts. So horizontal shift had to do with it being inside. So it was either f of x plus or minus some value, k. Reflections had to do with a negative. So that was either a negative f of x or a f of negative x. The compressions was multiplying by some coefficient either inside or outside. So that was the f of a times x or a times f of x. And the last one, vertical shifts, that was when you're adding or subtracting outside of a function. So that would have been the f of x plus or minus some constant. Okay. So write the function whose graph is 
the graph of y equals x cubed that is, so here's an example. So we're gonna write the function. This graph is y equals x cubed. But is <laughs> a, let's say, no. let's say, I'm going to say reflected across the y axis. This was number one. Two, they're gonna shift it right three units. And the last thing is shift down two units. So let's do it in the order they told us to do it. So reflect it across the y-axis. Okay, so again, this is where I have to kind of think about it. Now I have to think, okay, there's my y-axis. If I'm reflecting it across this y-axis, this is changing my value of my x. So reflect it across the x-axis, I know I need to plug in negative x for x. So instead, I'm going to have the equation y is equal to negative x quantity cubed. I can simplify this right now, or I can do it later. It might be easier to simplify it right now. Um, negative x times negative x times negative x. I mean, I could rewrite this either way, I guess is right, as negative x quantity cubed. Then it tells me to shift to the right three units. So shift to the right three units, it's opposite. Horizontal is opposite of what you would think. So normally I would think if I'm going to the right, I'm adding three, but it's opposite. So I would have to actually subtract three. So I'm gonna have to subtract three. From X. Or we can write it as X minus three. So we're going to go back into our new function that we got when we reflected across the y axis. And we're going to go in there wherever we see an x, where we're going to replace it with this whole expression x minus 3. So doing that I get y is equal to, I have this negative out here, go and plug in x minus 3, this whole expression, and then it's cubed. And then the last thing it tells me to do is shift down two units. So this tells me I'm going to subtract two from the y value. So subtracting two would give me from my new equation after applying the second shift would give me y is equal to negative x minus three quantity cubed minus two outside. Okay, so we just found 
the function of y equals x cubed with those transformations on that graph. Oops. So same sort of idea. This time we're going to use y equals square root of x and apply the following. Find the function that is finally graphed after each of the following transformation is applied to the graph of y equals square root of x in order stated. And the function after applying the transformations. in the following order. Okay, so we're gonna, first, we're gonna shift it up two units. So if we want to go up two units, that's shifting it vertically and that goes outside. That affects my y value. And so this is now becoming y is equal to the square root of x and then a plus two outside. The next thing it tells us to do is reflect about I'm going to change it the x axis Actually now let me go back to what they said y axis Yeah oh well um, it doesn't really matter. Y axis, again, think about where you're reflecting. Y axis, see if you're changing your X values or your Y values. So going across this Y axis, I'm changing my X values. So we need to change our sign of X. And so our new equation is going to be Y is equal to the square root of negative x plus 2. And then shift left 3 units. So this is affecting my x value. And I have to do the opposite. So left, I um, normally would think subtracting because I'm changing, but it's actually picking up the slack. And so I'm add, adding three. And so I get y is equal to the square root of negative x plus three. And then I have this plus two. So we get our final result. It's 
graph each function using techniques of shifting, compressing, stretching, and or reflecting. Start the graph of the basic function um, and then show all the steps. Be sure you show at least three key points. Find the domain and range of each function. Okay, so if we were looking at g of x is equal to let's just come up with one how about um the square root of 2 minus x and then plus 1. Okay, so the parent function or the, the graph that we're performing transformations off of, let's call it f of x. So we're going to transform. f of x equals square root of x. Well, we talked about that one already. And so we have some key points on that one. We've graphed that at the beginning of class. And so we have 0, 0, 1, 1. This is our original function. So we didn't have the square root of 4. We had 2. Okay, so order matters. And so it told us that we have to do the um, horizontal shifts first. And so that's gonna be inside this function. And so think of it this way maybe. G of X could also be rewritten as the square root of negative X plus two underneath the radical and then plus one outside. So looking at this minus two and I'm sorry, this plus two in here. So this shifts it horizontally. To the left. Two units. So doing that two units to the left. My new graph would look like this. So my point zero, zero is now negative two, zero. My point that was at one, one Shifting it to left two, subtracting two from one, I get back negative one, one. And then my point that was at four, two, I'm just gonna do all of these. This is gonna be negative four, two. So negative two, zero, negative one, one, and four, negative four, two. That seems wrong. I'm sorry, what was I doing? I'm, add, I'm subtracting two. Subtracting two from four gives us two. Okay, I knew something was wrong because it wasn't matching up. So I make, um, sorry, it's two. Subtracting two gives us two, two, two. Okay, so now the next is reflections. And so we're looking at 
negative x. So that is looking at reflecting it, changing my x signs. So this minus in here, So minus this x plus 2, this is going to reflect it. Across the e, changing my x signs, y axis. So changing my x signs from the green. So negative 2, 0 is now going to become 2, 0. Changing my sign of my x is now going to become 1, 1. Changing the sign of my x would become negative 2, 2. So, so far, this is g of negative x plus 2. And then the last piece of that graph is this plus 1, the vertical shift. And so the plus 1, so the g of negative x plus 2 outside is a plus 1. This is going to shift the graph up. Up one. Let me just move that. And so shifting it up one affects my y value. X is going to stay the same. So my point two zero is now, come on, sorry, I lost it. There we go. So my point two zero, don't do that, is two one. My point one one, I'm adding one to my y value, is one two. And my point negative two two, adding one to my y value, is negative two three. So plotting those, I have two one. I have 1, 2, and I have negative 2, 3. Which looks like this. So this is our g of x function, which is equal to square root of 2 minus x plus 1. I technically on these should have said f of instead of g, because this is what I had been doing to my f function, which had been the, just the square root of x. The last one we got was our G function. Okay. 
So transformations of graphs. Oops, they had us answer a couple more questions. They wanted us to know the domain. of our original f of x equals square root of x and range. Well, our domain and range, they're all the x values we can use for this black graph, and not all the x values, all the x values from zero to infinity. And our y values that we're hitting are also 0 to infinity. But the domain of the n function Well, domain here, the small, uh, um, biggest value that it is, x can be is 2. We're hitting all the x values that are less than or equal to 2. And so this is going to be a negative infinity to positive 2. The range of g of x. That's all the y values you're hitting. So notice that the smallest y value this blue graph is hitting is at 1. So we're hitting 1 to infinity. OK, so I think we answered all the questions they wanted us on that problem, which perfect timing. Um, so I will look maybe at a couple more problems on this section on Thursday, and then we are done. I'm not going to cover, decided I'm not covering 3.6 in the book. Um, that was an optional topic, and I don't think we have time. Um, and so we will jump into chapter four. And so chapter four just um, should be something that goes pretty fast as another chapter two type thing looking at linear models, quadratic functions, um, and inequalities. And so just to be aware that we're going to go through pretty fast. Okay, so I'm going to stop now and I have office hours if you want to stay and ask questions. <laughs>